Day. One tends to smell the city after the rain, for better or for worse. Please, sit. Attention to give up the noxious weed I see. The smell of bergamot, it was a dead giveaway. Oswego tea, I think they call it in America. They drink an infusion of the stuff for no apparent reason other than pure pleasure. <laughs> Have you been to America? Not recently. Hmm. Just as I thought. You seem to be a very observant person. Yes, the senses can become rather blunted. So one must make a game of it, you see. Kind of like the boy in Kipling. Do you enjoy Kipling? Remarkable. How a man of such weakened eyes should write so much about the sense of sight. Hmm. Compensation, perhaps, for the... Ah, oh, an alienist. You must be a follower of Freud. I perceived by your boots that you've been to Vienna. The souls, they were unmistakable. You, sir, must come here often to guess out the occupations of strangers. Bit of a game with you, is it? Game? <laughs> there are no games in the battlefield of life. Mr... Devors. Devors? Dutch? Do you speak the language? No. Just as I suspected. <laughs> the labials are clearly not formed in that direction. I beg your pardon. Montague. Samuel Montague. Now see here, Mr. Montague, I don't uh, know... Uh, no offence, sir. No offence at all. I can clearly see your British hedgehog far outweighs your mink tail. And what the devil do you mean by that? Sir, I didn't mean to offend you. It was a joke on my part that failed to amuse. Say, the gentleman over there. Please, don't, don't look at him directly. What do you make of him? He's a doctor. How can you tell? He has the slightly haunched shoulders of a man who has sat by many a sick bed. Care to venture further? And the tips of his fingers are stained with silver nitrate from the treating of warts. <laughs> How can you be sure he's not an apothecary? Apothecaries do not generally carry black bags. Splendid! And add to that, the hospital pin on his lapel and the outline of a stethoscope in his jacket pocket. It becomes obvious. I bet you can't tell me three solid facts about her. Heinrich, come and see bitten, my little toad. She's German. And? She's German, and that's an end to it. Ah, oh, what is it? You see, well, she's married, he rings on the usual finger. She's widowed, and quite recently found one to judge. The dress is fresh from the morning warehouse. The label is still fixed, which means she's been greatly distracted, and therefore has no maid. But why is she here? A pleasant afternoon in the park, perhaps. But what if, for instance, she's mourning her father, her mother, her great-grandmother, for that matter. Then her name wouldn't have been in this morning's newspaper. What? Of course. That's how you knew. Yes, tragic, but somewhat true. Hmm. 
Shocking death in Buncombe Place. Police were called at an early hour this morning to number six by Miss Freda Barnett, who had moments before found her husband, Welland Barnett, dead in a pool of his own blood. The victim had received a number of stab wounds to the back of the neck, any which could have proved fatal, according to the police surgeon on the scene. The deceased was described as a man of regular habits and had no known enemies, but whom has left his wife, Miss Barnett, to mourn and their only child, Heinrich, aged seven. They always go for the heart, don't they? These scandal stories. Inspector Gregson of the Scotland Yard has opinionated that the robbery may have been a motive as a small silver key of peculiar design was missing from its customary place upon the victim's waistcoat chain. You know, I made my way over to number six Buncombe Place. My old friend Inspector Gregson allowed me to have a little look around. Gregson? You know him? <laughs> Those old lags have friends too, you know. Surprising, is it not? Who you meet in the park? The intriguing thing was the positions of the wounds, you see. They were high in the neck, which isn't anything in itself. But it's just that Mr. Welland Barnett was well over six feet in measurement. How peculiar that the lady of the house should leave under such circumstances. Who could know? Pointless to guess. <laughs> guess? <laughs> Where murder's afoot, guess is disallowed. No, no, no. The facts must be driven home like nails in the shoe of a horse. Tap, tap, tap. Do you hear that, Mr. Voss? No. Imagine this. Imagine on this fine day, a woman leaves the house in which her husband has just been brutally murdered to attend a park over a mile away. Why not the one across from where she lives? It must have been distance. She didn't want to be noticed. It was to meet someone. <laughs> Good heavens. Who? You. You'd have been quite capable of stabbing a man as tall as Welland Barnett. Not that that's anything in itself. Preposterous. But then there was your behaviour. I noticed you circling the lady's bench several times as you tried to make an approach, but I assume the presence of the police constables possibly put you off. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? You don't know about the key to the National Safety Deposit Box, which holds Mr Welland Barnett's life insurance policy? Outrageous! Then there is the blood, sir, on the sole of your shoe. I noticed it when you crossed your legs. Oh, Watson, I believe this is where you come in. Be careful of the knives concealed in the newspaper. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, constables, right on time. I believe we have a gentleman here your inspector would no doubt like to see. There may even be a promotion in for you, too. You devil! You're no more Samuel Montague than the man on the moon. You're Sherlock Holmes. Indeed I am. The lady on the second bench is Miss Barnett. She has a key on her person. I'm sure your inspector would like to know that too. Come, Holmes. We've just got enough time to fortify ourselves with roast beef at Simpsons. <laughs>